Welcome back to John's Films. Robert Stancer recently posted in the comments of a previous video some questions about audio, and I thought this was a great opportunity for us to jump into DaVinci Resolve for Beginners, Episode 5, Audio Basics. Here we're looking at how to treat individual audio tracks, how to balance them among each other, some studio tricks in what you can do to make room for your vocal audio so that you can understand it, and a few other balancing tricks that you can use so that you can make your audio sound good. Thanks for the question, Robert. Let's jump in to the next in the DaVinci Resolve for Beginners workflow. Starting in our edit page down at the bottom, we have our media pool, which we became familiar with in a prior video. If you haven't seen it, click in the top right. Here I've got different bins where I'll manage each of my video and audio footage. We'll start with our A roll, and I'm going to double click to get into it and I'm going to import some media into my A roll. I'll go to my recent videos in my video footage projects, video footage. Here I'm going to go into my bad purchases and pull out just some talking head video. This is what we'll call our A roll. This has me on camera talking. I've got it by dragging it into my preview window. I'm going to drag it ahead to where I get, okay here we are, I'm talking didn't like the way that was focused still don't like it still don't like it lighting there we go all right in my video window here I'm using the space bar to play and I press I that creates an Today end point about the worst decisions I've made in computer hardware didn't like that take Welcome back to, John's film. to speed this up I hit the L key a few times and now I'm going to hit O. That's going to be my out point. I have an option. I can either click in the middle of this frame and drag it down into my timeline. That drags both. I can hit F9, which does the same thing. I can drag this video film frame picture and only drag the video, no audio. Or I can drag the audio waveform and only get the audio rather than the video. In this case, because this is my talking head video, I'm going to drag the entire image down or press F9 and add it to my timeline. What I've got is a representation of my video in the top half and on the bottom half are my audio. I'll add tracks as I want to layer on effects up here and as I want to layer on more audio tracks down here. Let's do that now. I'm going to come back out and go to a background sound. Here, let's say we're being a little funky. I'm going to import some media I'm going to go way back into the archives, bulk storage, published videos. Let's go camping. Here we've got some GoPro footage. This looks like me on a kayak, fishing. Okay. Let's grab one of these. Mm -hmm. Not that one. That's us talking about Lightwine's fish there. Here we go. Nice water sounds. So I'll hit I again. Got some good birds in here. Nothing like an old-fashioned tangle. The fly rod. There we go. Okay. So I pulled some of those bird sounds out. I'm going to layer them down. I could either notice what I just did. I dragged the entire clip. Whoops. Because what did it do? It obscured my talking head. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is grab this waveform image. And now when I drag it down, I only get the audio. Perfect. Finally, I'd like to put some music behind this. To do that, I can go back to my YouTube studio. And YouTube is fantastic in this. They give you the ability to, in your studio, access an audio library. This audio library gives you free music that you can use in your videos. Some has attribution required. That means you need to put the details of where you got it and who created it in your YouTube comments. or some of this that is attribution not required. And now we've got a little bit of music we can use. Let's find something. All right. So we'll download this by clicking on the right side here. It goes into my downloads folder. And from here, I'm going to cheat in this case. Normally, I'd download it somewhere meaningful. I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to drop this into the music bin that I've got created under my master. To add this to my timeline, I'm just going to drag it straight down. I know it's a complete track, complete audio. I don't need to cut it up in my preview window. Now I can immediately see a problem. The problem is 
the music is much, much louder than my A-roll, my sound effects. You can't, even, you can't even tell I'm talking in there. So we need to balance the audio. When you first start video editing, you think, well, here's what we'll do. I am going to find gaps in my audio. I can see one right there where I'm not talking. I'm going to make it loud there. I'll make it quiet while I'm talking. And there's even an automatic way to do this uh, in a more advanced t tutorial I showed you in Fairlight. But that's not what we really want. That really distracts the, the viewer as they're <laughs> listening to you talk, and all of a sudden, bam, they're hit with some audio, and then poof, it pulls back, and then it's back. That's really annoying. So what we need to do is first get things in the ballpark. I can do that here. Notice I drag this little white bar, and I pull up the audio volume for each of these tracks or clips individually. That's at a clip level. I can do it in the Properties window of the Inspector on the top right. Make sure Audio is selected. And I can pull the volume of that clip up and down. That affects only this clip. If I had multiple clips on this same track, it would only do the clip. Alternatively, if I hit Mixer in the top right, I now have the ability to control each individual track as a whole, and I can pull the volume up and down on that track. That's what I'm going to do for my music to balance it out. What I don't like about that is I don't get a great visual representation of how loud it is unless I'm playing it, and then I can see which Welcome tracks are balanced and where they land. Again, that was miserable, and you'll notice as I was saying, I can see how they're balanced. You really couldn't understand what I was saying because of the mix. So I'm going to pull that back up for the moment, and I'm going to adjust the overall clip way down decisions I've made in computer hardware. Okay, so we can hear my voice a little bit better, but what you'll find is it still competes, especially when we start to add more films. Today I'm talking about birds in the background. This is something that will truly annoy your users. It makes it hard for them to watch your video, and so they won't. All right, so I'm going to balance this out even more, but volume isn't our only trick. Volume is uh, kind of the, the cheating way to do it. It's the amateur way to do it. There is a better way. To do the better way, you have to understand that to do the better way, you have to understand that the voice, the human voice, really broadcasts between specific frequencies, typically around 100 hertz up just over 1,000 hertz to maybe 1,200 for the usable range. And so what I'm going to do is hit this S in my audio track that says solo this track. What that means is about the worst decisions. Only play that track. Now, if you've got headphones on, you can probably hear. Listen with me for a high pitched kind of hiss. Welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm talking about. The you can really hear it here in the white space. How do we get rid of that? There's some more advanced ways to do it in a future tutorial I'll show you in the Fairlight tab. But while we're here, we can do this pretty easily using the clip equalizer. So make sure you've got this audio track selected. Make sure in your inspector you're on the audio tab and enable your clip equalizer. In this case, I know the hisses live in the higher frequencies. I'm going to grab number four and I'm going to drag it down. Now I can do this while the clip's playing and this is awesome. So I play. Welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm looking at some of the worst decisions I've made in computer hardware. And I've made some bad ones. In fact, a great example is when I... And I drag down until I don't hear it in my headphones anymore. If you couldn't hear it while I was playing, headphones are your friend here. You get to control the volume, you isolate the sounds, and typically they reproduce much better. This is where, unfortunately, more expensive, nicer headphones will do you more favors. All right, so I've taken that hiss out of the top. I've still got some fan noise. I'm going to rip out by pulling on number one here, pulling it up to where about the 100 hertz range. Remember, that's where my voice starts. Welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm looking at some of the work. Immediately, we've got a much better sound, and I, have, I haven't I have even treated the vocals yet. Um, that's, again, a future tutorial, but this is the quick way. I'm going to turn off the clip equalizer so you can hear what this voice sounds like. First decisions I've made in computer hardware. And I've made some bad ones. In fact, a great example is... 
you could probably hear the difference there even on regular speakers. And that's what your users, your viewers are going to hear much better already. But there's more we can do. I'm going to take the solo off that track and I'm going to mute the track. All right, so we've got a balance going between these two, and they're not necessarily competing with each other. Neither of them needs to be in the foreground. So you get the water, you get the birds, and additionally, you've got your music, the piano in the background. Our challenge comes, however, when we try and mix in our vocals. Welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm talking about the... While the vocal channel is reasonably clean, it's hard to hear it with the birds going, the music going, and it's, it's tough. So, oh, what do we do? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we're just going to pull the volume out of the birds. The music's still too loud. Let's see what that does. Worst decisions I've made in computer hardware. Notice, I've pulled the volumes way down on those, but it still can be difficult to hear my voice. Here's another trick. I'm going to highlight my birds, for instance, and I'm going to turn on my clip equalizer again with the audio inspector. What did I say about the human voice? It lives between 100 and 1,000 hertz. With the shape I've got on my band 3, I'm going to use band 3 to draw down between 100 and 1,000 hertz. Somewhere around 800 is typically the best. And if we really allow me to use the entire space by clicking the arrow in the top right, I'm going to adjust the Q range to be a little bit wider. This is the width of this channel modification. So here we go, somewhere around there. Hardware. Welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm talking... Now, if I come down to the song and mute it... Hardware. Welcome back to John's Films. I've made some room in the vocal range so that my vocals can always peak on top of, in the range and the frequency I speak, on top of the bird chirping and it really projects the voice out forward. Let's do the same thing here on our piano track. Today I'm talking about the worst. So there you have it without it. I click on that. I'm gonna again use band three based on the shape. I can alter the shapes of these here, but because band three is already selected, I'll just cheat and grab it, pull it down, adjust the EQ to give me some more space. And now, welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm talking about the worst decisions I've made. In the track is still there, the music, and it's gently playing along, but it's no longer arguing with my vocals. I can understand what I'm saying. I still get the dramatic effect or the feeling of the music, but it doesn't come to the forefront and interact, compete. Now I can pull down the volume and balance it. Today I'm talking about the worst decisions I've made. And it all comes through. Here we are with in computer hardware. Birds. Today I'm talking about the worst decisions I've made. Now, does it make sense? Not necessarily. <laughs> because I'm talking about the worst decisions I've made in computer hardware. And as much as I like computer hardware, that's pretty serious to me. Instead, I've got like birds chirping and really soft piano. So the music doesn't work together, but the mix works much better now. <laughs> so... Now, these are the tricks that I would use and how I mix my audio. I think it's perfect for the DaVinci Resolve Beginner Series. Pass it on to a friend that's got, you know, just starting out in Resolve as well. And let me know what you think of the video down in the comments. You have more comments. If I haven't added something you'd love to see, let me know. Uh, just like Robert's suggesting here, I love to get these suggestions, make great videos out of them. And I really appreciate you watching. So click like if you like this video, share it with a friend who might benefit from it, and have a great day.